It's the middle of winter and gardeners everywhere are getting the itch to grow something. Seed catalogs have started showing up in mass and the sheer quantity of seeds available can be pretty overwhelming. As a beginner, it can feel like you need to purchase one of everything. But before you hit buy now on those cards, check out today's episode where I'll be going over a few tips for purchasing seeds as well as sharing my favorite companies to purchase from. Welcome to the Garden Things with Friends podcast. We're here to show that building a thriving garden is possible for everyone, even those with busy schedules and long to-do lists. I'm Ashley, your host, and two years ago, I turned my garden dreams into reality in my suburban backyard. Through trial and error over the next two seasons, I've created a thriving garden that I absolutely love. My goal is to inspire you to create your dream garden too. So let's grow together. Hello, and welcome back to our gardening podcast. Today, I am excited to help walk you through my process of purchasing seeds, as well as share a few of the companies I'm purchasing from this year. So one of the running jokes in gardening community is the fact that gardeners are obsessed with seeds. And that's not far from the truth. If you ask any gardener to see their seeds, you will be amazed at the volume they have. It's almost as if when you become a gardener, you get the seed obsession. Now, I want to encourage you away from that obsession, at least in the beginning of your gardening journey. Now, when I decided I wanted to start a garden, I went through catalogs and I went crazy. I bought literally everything I could imagine growing and even some things that I couldn't imagine growing because why not? This has led to me having way more seeds than I needed and lots of seeds that don't grow great in my location. So I want to dive into a few tips and some important things to consider when you are purchasing seeds so you don't have that same issue. Now, when you're looking through a seed catalog without first doing a little planning, it's kind of like walking into a grocery store hungry. Everything looks good and then you quickly end up with far more than you sought out to get. In episode two, we talked about a few questions you should ask yourself before you plan your garden. And one of those questions was, what do you want to grow? Having this list of items you may want to grow is key to decreasing the overwhelm of seed buying. I recommend considering things that your family eats regularly, as well as plants that give you a lot of bang for your buck, like herbs. You can also put dream seeds on your list, but distinguish those between that and family favorites. You want to minimize the amount of dream items to just a few each year so that you can really learn about the growing habits of each plant. After you have your list of plants you want to try to grow, you can focus your search on the varieties on your list. When you look at seed catalogs or peruse online, you'll notice that there are a lot of terms to describe the seeds. It's important to know what these mean so you can make informed decisions about what to purchase. Now, here are a few key terms that you'll see in the seed catalogs. So your maturity date, and this is gonna refer to the estimated time from sowing the seed to harvesting. Some varieties may have shorter or longer maturity dates, which is important distinguishing factor we'll discuss in detail later. Another set of terms that you'll notice when searching for seeds is heirloom seeds versus hybrid seeds. Heirloom seeds are those that have been saved and passed down over time, and they must be open pollinated. Open pollination is a natural way of a plant becoming pollinated by the wind, rain, bees, and birds. These heirloom seeds often are more likely to get diseases and have larger, oddly shaped fruit. Hybrids are the result of two plants with specific characteristics being deliberately crossed to produce a new third variety with the characteristics of the parent plants. Saving seeds from these plants will give you one of the parent plants. Now the next group of turns relate to growing habits of plants. For bean and pea plants, you will see them described as pole or bush. A pole bean is going to be one that grows in a vining habit. If you grow these types of legumes, you'll want to have some sort of trellising for them. On the other hand, bush beans and peas are much more condensed plants and don't need the trellising. These will be better for those with smaller growing spaces. 
Indeterminate and determinate is another set of terms related to growing habit. Indeterminate tomatoes will continue growing in a vine fashion and will require significant trellising. They'll also produce throughout the season. Determinate plants tend to be more bush-like. While they will require trellising, they typically have a flush of fruiting at one time and then slow down or stop producing altogether. Now there are many more gardening terms that you may see and I invite you to check out our garden glossary located on our website. And I'll link that in the show notes below. Now let's look at how to use these terms when browsing through seed catalogs or websites. Trust me, it'll make a world of difference. When we're purchasing seeds, we will want to make sure that you are matching the seeds to your climate. And what this really means is knowing your frost dates and growing season length, and then choosing varieties with a maturity date that will allow the plants to yield a good harvest. In the north, where you have short warm seasons, you'll want to select warm season crops like tomatoes and peppers that have short maturity rates and tend to grow in bush patterns. In the south, where our cool season may be shorter, choosing cool weather crops that have shorter days to maturity can ensure you get lots of fresh lettuce and cold crops before it gets hot and they bolt. And bolting is basically when the heat signals a cold weather crop to start producing seed instead of harvestable vegetation. Another key way to use these terms and make the most of your seed shopping is to be conscious of your growing space. If you're growing in containers or have a small garden footprint, you will want to see if the plants will require a lot of trellising or if they grow in a bush pattern. Now, these tips are very simple, but they can be the difference between you having a wealth of usable seeds or just having a collection. Now that we've gone through the how to buy, I wanna talk about a few of the companies that I have purchased from and have had great success with. I have tried several companies and I have some personal favorites that I always tend to go back to when I'm planning my garden. I want to explain why I love them and how they excel in different aspects. But I also want to point out that while I have purchased from everywhere, in my planning, I look to small businesses and companies that specialize in seeds. However, I have purchased seeds from the Dollar Tree that did fantastic and seeds from larger companies that never produced. I say that to say if you're making the choice to grow your own food and try out gardening, where you buy seeds is not important. Now, with that out of the way, here are some of my favorite seed companies and why I love them. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange is a company that offers a wide range of seeds, including many varieties specifically suited for Southern growers. This is particularly beneficial when it comes to selecting cool weather crops. Their diverse selection ensures that customers have access to the right seeds for their specific needs. The Ochre Lady is a company that I make purchases from approximately every other month. They offer a diverse range of seeds and maintain an incredibly inspiring social media presence. You've got to see her on TikTok. Additionally, this is a black owned business. Botanical Interest is a company I highly recommend. They possess a vast wealth of knowledge, offer a wide range of seeds and their sales are exceptional. This year, I purchased various types of garlic, both hard neck and soft, and so far they have thrived in my garden. Now, Isla's Garden and Seed Needs are two fantastic companies conveniently located on Amazon. They have very prompt shipping, expedited delivery, and while I understand that credibility on Amazon is sometimes questionable, I can personally attest to the success I've had with seeds from both of these shops. Now, lastly, I wanna share a few companies that I've used for specialty seed purchases. The Will Seeds is a seed company I found on Etsy and they have a wide variety of micro dwarf tomatoes. I've made multiple purchases and grown many of these plants in my arrow garden. They have produced well and the germination rates were phenomenal. The Hood Garden is another small specialty shop I've used to purchase many different types of peppers. And while I'm not a huge hot pepper fan, their seeds fall all along the Scoville scale and there's sure to be something for everybody. Now, Wood Prairie Family Farms is a company that sells a lot of different seeds, but their specialty is certified organic seed potatoes. 
They have such a huge selection and really help you to understand the best potatoes for your area and your preferences. I've purchased twice from them and have been so pleased with the variety, the cost, and the quality of the seed potatoes I've received. If you'd like to check out any of these companies, you can check them out below. I'll go ahead and link that in the show notes. All right, that's it. But before we wrap up, let's quickly recap what we've discussed today. We covered some important terms for purchasing seed, shared tips for choosing the right ones, and discussed some favorite and local seed companies. I just want to remind you that there are so many great seed companies out there, and it's always good to try new ones and find the best fit for your garden. Don't be afraid to experiment and have fun with this gardening journey. I hope this episode has been helpful and will make your next seed purchase so much easier. If you dug this episode, I'd be honored if you would rate this podcast and spread the word to your friends who are also passionate about gardening. Your five-star support fuels the growth of Garden Things with Friends, and together we'll cultivate a network of thriving gardens and plant-loving friends. Happy gardening, and remember, it's never the wrong time to grow where you are.